What is the force at the heart of life? What is the engine that drives it forward? That links all living things from the smallest to the largest. That links families through generations in looks, in personality, in health, and in sickness. Scientists had searched for the answer for hundreds of years. Until 1953, when two young men ran into a British pub shouting that they'd discovered the secret of life. You see the most beautiful girl in the world, and you're going to see her again. You know, it was great. The secret was DNA. A microscopic strand of only four chemicals, but capable of such infinite variety that it carries the blueprint and directs the growth of every living thing on Earth. The genetic revolution was about to begin. The time period was 60 years ago. Not many European women received an education. But one woman dared to challenge the world. By going against her father's rules, her ambitious nature led her into an interest in biology. By going to prestigious colleges and earning a PhD and becoming a biophysicist and an X-ray crystallographer, she discovered something that shook the scientific community. The shape of DNA, a double helix. And her name? Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind Elsie Franklin was born on July 25, 1920, in Notting Hill, London, to her father, Ellis Franklin, and her mother, Muriel Whaley. Rosalind grew up with three brothers and a sister. Ever since she was young, Rosalind had ambitious goals towards the fields of mathematics and science, which was uncommon for a woman at the time. Although it was against her father's wishes, she attended Cambridge University, which then was an all-male college. After graduating with a PhD, Rosalind went to work at King's College, where she was a research associate for John Randall. There, she was able to conduct research that would soon be groundbreaking. Rosalind Franklin shocked the scientific world with the discovery of Photo 51 picture taken using x-ray diffraction that revealed the structure of DNA. But what is DNA? DNA contains two strands of building blocks called nucleotides, arranged like a spiral staircase. Each nucleotide includes three parts, a phosphate group, a sugar molecule, and one of four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine or thymine. The sugar phosphate bonds form the double backbone of the molecule, the handrails of the staircase. But we find the genetic key to DNA in the steps of this stairway, the nitrogen containing bases. These bases link up using hydrogen bonds in a very specific way. Adenine will bond only with thymine. A to T. Cytosine only bonds with guanine, C to G. While these basic pairings never change, the order of the pairs along each strand varies greatly from one species to the next. In this elegant design, we see how nature stores the instructions to build all living things. Franklin initially served as Maurice Wilkins' substitute, undertaking the task of mentoring his PhD student, Raymond Gosling. On returning from his absence in the lab, Wilkins assumed Franklin would work under him as his apprentice. Feeling threatened by her presence, Wilkins left the institution he once did DNA research for. After undermining Franklin's scientific intellect and abilities because she was a woman, Wilkins was introduced to James Watson and Francis Crick, 
who are already on the path to discovering the structure of DNA. He eventually presented Franklin's research notes, including Photo 51. Unfortunately, when Watson, Crick, and Wilkins received the Nobel Prize for all the DNA research Rosalind had done, she was not credited. Franklin died on April 16, 1958 at age 37 to ovarian cancer. It is believed to be caused by radiation exposure from her research experiments. Because of Franklin's work, scientists today have applied the understanding of DNA for criminal investigation and even in fraternity testing. Some technology burst into being as our understanding of the genetic code buried in DNA grew. It's going to transform everything. Just the bare surface has been scrapped. Science will never be the same. There were hopes for healthier lives. That stuff kept me alive and keeping me alive right now. Promises of an end to inherited disease. I think I've mapped a gene for inherited breast cancer. Cancer is a solvable problem. I don't have to say anything. I'm going to cure cancer. The excitement of discovery. Dizzy. Sometimes when I start to talk about it, I get giddy. Scientists like falling in love. I just want to work all the time. I don't want to go home. And the fear of scientists playing God. Contamination. It's the most dangerous and outrageous experiment. We're worried about something that could fall out of the laboratory, such as a Frankenstein. If we don't play God, who will? Even the course of human evolution may soon be ours to control. This is potentially the most important organized scientific effort that the human species has ever mounted. Aspects of society will never be the same again.